Well, first, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, as you may know, I have no uh, knowledge in marine research and uh, the, the whole uh, field is very, is, is in a way very uh, far away. It was for years in the desert, so I, I hardly saw the sea. However, however, I was uh, very much involved with the Italian University Institute in, 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 uh, in Eilat, because we had a campus there. Uh, so much to understand the difference between the Red Sea and the uh, uh, and, and the Mediterranean Sea, and because uh, I see the sea, I mean, what well, what about the differences? And then I uh, came really to understand that there are a lot of differences and a lot of opportunities there. So thank thank you very much. Uh, since I have only fifteen minutes, I'm going to be very focused. And uh, tell you first my world view on uh, on the PhD in universities, on the postdoc experience, the way I see it. Uh, by the way, I saw it uh, in, the, in the past, but I see it more vigorously now in my position as a chairwoman uh, of the Executive Committee of Science Abroad, which is uh, uh, an organization that was founded uh, almost 20 years ago by two postdocs, one in MIT, one in Harvard. Uh, that um, confronted with uh, the, the big issue of returning back home. And at that time, I would say most of the postdocs uh, really aspired to go back to Israel. Now it is a bit different and maybe I'll touch on that uh, a little bit later. Um, so let me start by saying that um, obviously I'm going to refer mainly to the issue in Israel. Uh, there are some generic and global aspects to the postdoc uh, experience uh, uh, as it is, but uh, I'm going to refer mostly to the things that are happening in Israel, and, um, and I'm going to dwell a little bit about what Science Abroad is all about, what it is doing uh, for uh, postdoctorates mainly, but also young scientists uh, in uh, abroad, uh, first to help them over there, but definitely with the goal of bringing them uh, back home, and as you will say, to academia uh, or to the uh, industry. Uh, my own experience, I, since I'm a physician in my um, background, I had a fellowship in medicine, it is fellowship, not a uh, postdoc. Um, so I myself experienced, you know, some of the issues and challenges that uh, go together with this kind of uh, uh, experience. Um, it was years and years ago, but my most, I mean, most of my insight into the issue is from my academic uh, leadership positions, whether as a dean or later on as a president. So let's start. Um, so I'm going to, to say a few words about the university page. Uh, um, based PhD experience. And again, it's based on, on, on the Israeli story, but I think it is fairly global. First of all, uh, the PhD experience in Israel is mostly oriented towards uh, a principal investigator uh, scientific career in academic institution. All of our faculty, our researchers, and in a, in a way they breed their students uh, in, in, the, in the model, on the, the mode, uh, of themselves, uh, expecting them to find one day their position as PIs in university. So most of the research or much of the research is what we call hypothesis based or, or basic, or in recent years also translational, especially when it comes to life sciences, but also in other fields. Um, and it is only very secondary um, that the PhD thesis is need-based kind of research. So the need is coming from the industry or from uh, wherever uh, out of the university and the academic research is being done there. Sometimes we, in collaboration with, uh, um, with mentors from the industry, but not very often. Um, so the bottom line is that during the PhD experience in universities, there is no formal, no built-in kind of uh, training, which is oriented towards uh, bridging the gap, the language gap, the, the, the cultural gap between academia and industry, which is huge, which is huge. So um, it is 
happening more and more in universities because we start to realize that most of our PhD students would not end up in academia and certainly not in academia in Israel because positions are limited. Um, and, and so there are more um, uh, open to the idea of bringing industry into the discourse, but it's still something very, um, uh, um, I would say secondary um, to the main uh, activity. So the decision on a postdoc, which is, you know, with the aim of knowing um, uh, that it is a prerequisite for an academic position. And I'm not going to go into this issue, which is another complex issue, especially when it comes to women, because uh, when we talk a little bit later about the, um, the decision, it is very much uh, related to uh, having a family already. So I'm not going to dwell on that, but this is a, a very big issue. So the goals, if we see, if we, if we perceive the postdoc period, uh, uh, experience as uh, a prerequisite for academic position later on, then we would definitely like to um, experience uh, a scientific, a new scientific environment, different than ours. Um, you know, use infrastructures that we, we may not have in our uh, institution or even in Israel, and. We want to acquire some uh, more um, uh, advanced technology techniques, etc., and also, not less than that, foster relationship for future collaborations, for future scientific collaborations, and not less important networks. Because at, later on, when you are in academia, you really need uh, recommendations whether to uh, to climb the. Uh, uh, the academic ladder or for any anything else. And you need a network of people that know you, that are related to you, you know them. So this is, I think, the, the major goals for really uh, um, uh, dec deciding um, about a postdoc. And therefore, and therefore, what are the considerations that we have in mind when we, when we, bought, we want to take this kind of, um, uh, uh, of, of a journey? So, in many times, um, um, the real importance is, is really how much of an academic research experience deep and wide we are going to acquire. Uh, it is very often that we want to continue our PhD topic, not always, or sometimes a niche within the topic that we have identified but very much along what we already know, what we've already accomplished through our PhD, preferably, and it's a, it, it's a no-brainer. We would like to go to uh, a leading scientist as, a, as a, a mentor or a very advanced lab in the field that we are going to choose. Also, preferably in a highly reputed academic uh, institute, especially if we want to foster later on collaborations, network, etc. Very important to have on uh, on our uh, CV, you know, places like Ivy Leagues, etc. Not that it is it is um, uh, not, not that always the leading scientist is necessarily in a highly reputed um, um, institution. So we have to make the decision what is more important and, and what what importance uh, we assign to each of those uh, configurations and obviously available scholarship because uh, you know especially when we talk about uh, um, Ivy League uh, universities the cost of living uh, rentals etc is very very high and it's a huge um, obstacle uh, that we need to address <laughs> 